The United Nations has suspended its anti-torture mission to Australia after its inspectors were refused entry at several jails. Now, the inspectors needed to visit detention facilities to monitor and prevent brutality against detainees. They also collected or wanted to collect relevant information and documentation for their assessments. Four years... Uh, human rights groups had voiced their concern about suspected abuses in Australian prisons, youth detention centres and immigration facilities. Now, the abuses, they say, were targeting Aboriginal communities in particular. The UN's anti-torture missions have been suspended or postponed in three other countries, Azerbaijan, Ukraine and Rwanda. Lorana Bartels is a professor of criminology at Australia National University uh, and she joins me now from Canberra. Good to have you with us uh, on the programme. Uh, how surprised are you by the move uh, of the Australian authorities? I think this is quite an extraordinary move. Australia ratified OPCAT in 2017 um, and then sought uh, an extension to um, the SPT delegation coming in, undertaking those inspections, um, initially to get the relevant um, processes in place and then due to COVID. But it was hardly a surprise that the inspection would be taking place. Um, so all the relevant organisations are well and truly on notice that this would be coming mm. and uh, um, have that suspended is really quite remarkable. I mean, where are the sticking points here? Because you're a federally run country, but even the federal government has to negotiate individually with states to actually get things done and with state institutions. They don't seem to be on the same page when it comes to this international body. Yes, that's correct. So, obviously, Australia as, uh, as a country has ratified OPCAT, but in Australia the prisons are run by the six states and the two territories. Um, now, all of those were, as I say, on notice that this would be happening, and it's actually only two of the states, New South Wales and Queensland, and in Queensland it's only relation, in fact, to the mental health facilities, not the prisons. Um, only two states have... Um, uh, said that they said that they wouldn't provide access. The other states and territories did, in, fi in fact, provide access um, to their facilities. Uh, and in fact, the Australian Attorney, Commonwealth Attorney General has now issued um, uh, uh, an exhortation to those two states, New South Wales and Queensland, to allow that access so that the inspectors can return and complete their inspections, as was, of course, envisaged. So, finally, I mean, how quickly does that really have to happen to limit the damage to Australia's reputation in this particular instance? Because you don't, I'm sure, want to be lumbered in the same group as Azerbaijan, Rwanda or even Ukraine. Look, I think significant damage has already been done and I think... Um, a lot of us who work in this space are, are um, really of the view of if we had nothing to hide, then there really would be no concern. Uh, and in fact, in the in the jurisdiction where I live, in the Australian Capital Territory, the Corrections Commissioner said, you know, the inspectors are welcome in compliance with the um, requirements, and if they have any recommendations, you know, in principle, we would be happy to take them on board. Um, that's the sort of approach that I think jurisdictions should be willing to take um, uh, to ensure that they are practicing in compliance with their human rights obligations. But the reality is that we have been um, uh, faced with extraordinary, um, I think, um, scandals, I think is a fair word to describe our prisons and youth detention centres across Australia, as you said in your introduction, especially when it comes to the treatment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, there's been a Royal Commission. There is currently a class action in relation to... Um, youth detention in uh, two states, Western Australia and Tasmania. There is currently an inquiry in one of those states in Tasmania. Um, uh, there are, um, uh, there's really no justification for Australia to shirk its obligations and to shy away from scrutiny when it's pretty clear that there are human rights abuses taking place. We shall see how quickly this is all rectified. For the moment, Lorana Bartels, thanks so much for joining us from Canberra. Thank you.